Hello everybody, and so we're taking a look at the performance that can be achieved by the Intel GMA 950 Integrated Graphics Processor. This IGP was pretty popular and saw broad utilization across many computers in the early 2000s, and there's a good chance that if you've worked with multiple old Soul laptops, then you've at least experienced some variation of the chip. So today I wanted to see what games could be run on such a weak graphics processor, but first, let's dive a bit into the history of the laptop that this chip is on. The laptop that I'll be running my tests on today is the Toshiba Satellite A135S4527. This laptop was released back in 2007 and was actually a decent upper mid-range model. In terms of the cost, I found one source to put it at $700, but that price was for while it was on sale. Regardless, this computer shipped with an Intel Pentium T2080 that had two threads and two cores clocked at 1.73 GHz all built upon the 65 nanometer process. The graphics chip inside this computer was the Intel GMA950 that had four pixel shaders, one vertex shader, four TMUs, and one ROP clocked at 166 MHz and built upon the 90 nanometer process. Additionally, this computer originally shipped with a 120 GB Hitachi hard drive, one GB of DDR2, Windows Vista, and a 15.4 inch display with a resolution of 1280 by 800. However, the computer I tested received an upgrade from 1GB to 2GB of RAM, and also the previous owner was running a non-genuine version of Windows 7 32-bit on this computer. In fact, every time he started up, it said that the license had expired or something to that effect, but the point is that the computer was a bit deplorable. Ignoring its age, this computer did have one aspect that I did quite enjoy in that it has a total of 4 USB ports. That's even more than my daily driver laptop has and it really gives this device a bit of a premium feel. However, this sentiment faded pretty quickly when one of the USB ports just decided to die halfway through benchmarking. But, as older devices often have, this laptop showed many signs of wear and tear with scratches and scrapes surrounding it on all sides. In fact, in my notes, I just wrote down f***ed up chassis and that basically explains the condition of this computer as a whole. Specifically, the plastic bit between the trackpad and buttons were broken and popped up, and the trackpad would sink in a tiny bit whenever you tried to use it. But, I guess usability and quality is the cost you pay for a free laptop. As previously stated, this laptop received a RAM upgrade from 1 to 2 gigabytes, and, of course, to do so, one would need to remove a cover from the bottom of the laptop in order to do the upgrade. And, let me just say, I've never seen any screw anywhere so terribly stripped out. Whoever did the upgrade apparently just doesn't have basic motor skills and annihilated the screw to the point where I don't think I'd be able to remove it if I wanted to. But that was just the screw specific to the RAM cover. Every other screw at the bottom of the laptop showed signs of removal and replacement, but wasn't nearly as messed up as this one was. Finally, this computer also has the same issue as another one that I've recently tested in that the battery reads plugged in, not charging, 0%. However, it does charge, and after a day of charge, you manage to reach 6%. After I unplugged it, it remained on for about 10 seconds before turning off. So yeah, this computer has a multitude of issues with it, but I'm just glad its non-genuine version of Windows is actually usable. So long story short, the laptop is very underpowered and the battery is messed up, but at least it has 4 USB ports. So let's head right into some gaming benchmarks of this system and review the tests conducted on it. As per usual, I tried to set the bar low for the first test on the system and began with the benchmark into Far Cry. Released in 2004, the specs of this computer should have been enough to successfully run the game, so I set the options to the low preset and started testing with the resolution of 1280 by 800. This yielded an average frame of 25 FPS, so I then lowered the resolution down to 800 by 600 to see if I could squeeze a higher FPS out of the system. With these settings, the average frame rate increased to 29, but there was no noticeable difference during gameplay. Next, I tried to play some Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. I ran this game with mostly all the lowest settings applied and a resolution of 800 by 600 and the game was decently playable. The frame rate was consistent and there was no stuttering and by the end of testing, the average frame rate was 26 FPS. I could have gone a bit lower with the settings but I felt this was a good balance between looks and performance and resolved to leave it as is. Sticking with the GTA series, I then played some Grand Theft Auto 3. Upon starting up, the game ran in a resolution of 640 by 480 and when I tried to change it, it just immediately crashed. However, I rebooted it and then was able to change the resolution to 1280 by 800. During testing, the GPU was the bottleneck of the system and the average frame rate came to be 31 FPS. I could lower settings to increase that number, but once again, I found this to be a good balance between performance and looks. I then played 2004's title of Half-Life 2. Although this game came out 3 years before this laptop, I still ran it with the lowest settings in a resolution of 640 by 480 So I sprinted around and shot some people for a bit, but ultimately the average frame rate resulted in a semi-playable 17 FPS. Following the Half-Life 2 test, I then tried to play a bit of Need for Speed Underground. As expected, the laptop was able to run the game pretty well but had a widely varied frame rate depending on where you were in the map. During the test, the frame rate was all over the place, from the lower teens to the lower 30s, while running the lowest settings in the resolution of 640x480. However, the game always remained playable, and by the end, the average frame rate was 19 FPS. The final test I conducted on the computer was of Star Wars Battlefront. I ran this game with a resolution of 1280x720 with all the lowest settings applied. However, it ended up being a bit more of a mixture of settings since it would not allow me to change some of them. I mean, the game was kinda playable, but overall I'd say no. This game did not run well on the system with an average frame of 12fps, thus concluding our testing of this laptop.
So that's how well a computer with an Intel GMN 950 will perform in some basic gaming tasks. However, the tests shown today aren't necessarily representative of the maximum capacities of the GMN 950, as in some instances the CPU was the bottleneck of the system, and I'm pretty sure the pitiful amount of 2GB of RAM wasn't exactly helping matters either. I tried testing a few other games on this computer, such as Elder Scrolls Morrowind, but it just kept crashing during startup and I was unable to get it into functional condition. Additionally, this is one of those uncommon instances where I don't think I, or anyone for that matter, could ever find any sort of use in such a terrible laptop. So I'll probably just end up parting out the system, but instead of discarding it, I was actually considering taking it to the shooting range, so let me know what you think of that idea. Actually, now that I'm taking a serious, critical look at it, the only components I think I'd ever wanted to possibly take out of the system is the Wi-Fi card because I have a slightly less crappy laptop that I could sell, but its Wi-Fi card is busted so I could swap it out and see if that would fix the issue. This, however, is all depending on the possibility that I could even manage to remove the bottom cover considering how messed up the screws on its underside are. But hey, did you know that I uploaded two unlisted videos on this channel within the last two weeks? Probably not because they have basically no views, but you can find these in the Discord exclusive channel of the official Jane Dyke Discord server, link in description. Regardless, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Also, please leave a comment below because interactions with viewers will help boost this video in the YouTube algorithm and I guarantee you that I will respond to your comments. While you're at it, please subscribe because it helps a lot in video quality and production and also positively affects my day. Finally, leave any questions or suggestions in the comments below and have a great day. Bye!